So this update, it puts us, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of our competitors when it comes to the quality of the product that we're providing. Um, the price point that we're offering this product at is the best in the industry. And with this firmware update, we are now squarely in the lead for the resistive capacity on our rack style batteries. Hey everyone, today I wanted to address an issue of people who are using large inverters with small battery banks and hoping to be able to run their system. The industry standard typically for an inverter is to ensure that you have about 20% overage. So we've got 5,000 watt batteries here and with these inverters you would typically need at least two of these batteries in order to start it up. We've gone ahead and after extensive testing um, at our in-house facility here in Sulphur Springs, Texas, We've developed a new uh, set of firmware for our batteries that will actually allow you to start up an inverter if you do it in the incorrect startup procedure. If you have too many inverters set up on your batteries, we've kind of addressed all of those issues for the people out there that are trying to run these more extreme ratios. The people out there that are trying to run a larger system and they're just getting started with their batteries, uh, maybe they're looking to expand later. We wanted to make sure that we had a solution for you. And so that's why we've come up with this new software to install on your batteries. This is going to address all of those issues. It's gonna take care of any of the uh, startup problems that you're having with that specific situation. And it's gonna allow people to expand their battery system at a later date if they needed to. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys here is I've got one of my batteries set up here that's got the new firmware on there. This firmware again was tested here locally in Sulphur Springs, test, uh, Texas. We've tested it for the longevity of the battery to ensure that it's not gonna impact um, any of the boards or the cells as it's uh, being used. So we've got the firmware installed on this one single battery. And what I'd like to show you guys is starting up two inverters, so about four times as much as you should be starting up with one of these batteries, and also doing it in the incorrect operating procedure, and just show you how robust this new firmware is. So I've got the single battery on. Typically, we recommend having the system in the on position and then turning the battery on. Today, I'm gonna to go ahead and just turn the system on with the battery already in the on position, and I'm gonna actually turn on both of these inverters at the same time. So real quick, I'm gonna turn both of these on, and we'll stop over and take a look at the screens here. You're gonna notice that they go through their startup procedure. And this typically takes a few seconds. And now you can see that both of these inverters are in the on position and running. So this is two large inverters with one single battery. And that's typically what we're seeing when people are running into this issue. So for the people who feel like they must go outside of industry standards, um, the new firmware is gonna be a solution for you. This, you, you know, honestly, we think that you're gonna be disappointed in the long run because you're gonna be, you've got a battery that can only output 5,000 watts. And you know, up here you've got 13,000 watts of inverting power. So you're gonna trip anyways when you hit that limit. Um, additionally, if you're keeping your system within the bounds of your single battery or your undersized battery bank, then you're going to be running out of electricity very quickly, and you're likely gonna to want to upgrade and add additional batteries down the line. So this firmware is solely developed for the people who are trying to go outside of the normal setups, who are trying to um, go to a more extreme ratio of inverters to batteries, or for people who are looking to uh, expand their system down the line as they can afford it, and you know they just want to get started and start with a single battery, but they've already got their inverters, something along those lines. Um, you're gonna find that most people are going to be completely okay with the normal setup. If you are not running into this issue, then you don't need to make any changes to your system at all. We recommend just sticking with what you normally have. However, if you're a user who's trying to have a more extreme ratio to, of inverters to batteries or uh, uh, slightly outside of the industry standard setup, then this is what this firmware is going to address. So for users who are gonna follow proper system design and they're gonna follow the industry standards, um, this firmware really isn't for you. As you can see in our previous example, we had these two batteries off. These are actually loaded with our the, uh, original firmware that comes with the batteries. 
And this is going to be for people who are following the industry standard, who have their system designed um, properly. And what I'm gonna do is show you guys the correct startup procedure. I've got, again, both of these inverters. I'm only gonna be turning one on because I've only got two batteries down here. So the first thing I do is go ahead and take a look in here. As you can see, I've only got the one inverter in the on position. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn both of these batteries on. And they take about a second to start up here. And you're gonna see that with a proper setup, that the original firmware, if you're following industry standards, is gonna work just fine. All right, I'm here with Marcus, and he's actually gonna take us through the process of updating the firmware if we are trying to go outside of the normal use. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is connect to the battery with a cable. This cable is a special cable that you'll need to um, contact us to get. It'll be on our website and we'll have a code there so that you can actually get this cable for free. Um, if you choose to uh, change your cable, it's the, there's a different pinout on this cable and we'll have a link down below with that information that you can follow. But with this cable, we've gone ahead and connected to the battery. We're gonna go ahead and hit port refresh just to make sure that we can connect. And then we're gonna click on the connect button. If you successfully connected, you'll see at the bottom, port open successfully as a flashing message. And just to verify, I always like to go to the bat info tab. We're gonna change the address to zero and add address to sequence. You'll see that the battery's uh, state of charge lows and the voltages. For updating the firmware, it is required that you're on port uh, address zero. So just ensure that you've got that set up. Next, we go to the program upgrade tab. And this is actually where you're gonna load the software. We're gonna have a zip file in the description of this video that you can download. And it's gonna have several different versions of the software. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to connect to the battery here as well. Again, we're gonna change the address to zero. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on get boot information. This takes about two to three seconds to load typically. It might take a little bit longer in your case. Um, but as soon as it gets the boot information, this is where we're gonna determine where, uh, which version of the software we're going to be installing. But as soon as you actually get the boot information here, uh, you're going to take a look and there's gonna be a hardware version number. You can see here, this one is 0207. That correlates to the software version that's installed on this battery. So we're gonna go ahead and load an upgrade program. When we click on this, again, these files are all gonna be included in the zip file. You can see here that they all have a name for each file. And we're, we're dealing with a 48 volt battery and we saw that it was 0207. So we're looking for the 207 update for 48 volts. And on this list, it's the first one on the list. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And then all we do from here is hit upgrade start. The upgrade on the battery typically takes a couple of minutes and you're gonna see that the lights on the front of the battery change while it's going through its upgrade. I'm gonna go ahead and let this go through and once it's finished, I'll be back on. So we've gone ahead and we've completed the firmware upgrade here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another demonstration here in just a minute. You can see the message at the bottom, upgrade successful. We're gonna do another demonstration that shows the single battery that we've just upgraded that was failing earlier, actually running um, the, uh, the two Schneider inverters by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk over here. I don't know if I cut that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. We've got the, the single battery here. Once the firmware has been, uh, upgrade's been completed, you wanna go ahead and turn this off. And we've got all three batteries in the off position here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the um, setup here again. Both of these are off. We've got the two Schneiders. I'm gonna turn the battery on first. That's gonna go through its startup procedure. And as soon as the state of charge lights are on, I can go ahead and turn on both Schneiders. So I'm gonna flip both of these on at the same time. Both Schneiders have gone through. You can see that they're starting up. And we'll give those just a second to finalize their startup and you can see that they both just kicked on. So we've got both of the Schneider inverters turned on on the single battery 
Whereas before we were failing with just this one battery. So you can see that the firmware has done what it needs to be done. So everybody, as you can see, this firmware upgrade is going to solve all of the issues that, that you're running into if you're going outside of the, the standard operating procedures for inverter sizing the batteries. Um, with this firmware update, it places us squarely in the lead for resistive capacity on uh, rack style batteries. The thing you have to remember is when we get a firmware update like this, we're not just flippantly putting out Chinese software and installing it on the batteries. We have an R&D team located here in Sulphur Springs, Texas, that we've tested this uh, firmware for the last four to five months under multiple different operating uh, parameters, different settings, different configurations to ensure that there's not any possibility of any damage or anything happening because of the firmware update. Um, you have to remember, EG4, we're a US-based company located here in Sulphur Springs, Texas, and your warranty obligation is held here in, in the United States. And we have a team local here that we went through all the testing with. We wanted to ensure that the, uh, the firmware update wasn't going to cause any issues. Uh, the biggest thing too is we know that the, the hardware was already there to be able to handle this. We just wanted to test everything locally. So this update, it puts us you know, leaps and bounds ahead of our competitors when it comes to the quality of the product that we're providing. Um, the price point that we're offering this product at is the best in the industry. And with this firmware update, we are now squarely in the lead for the resistive capacity on our rack style batteries.